Duchess with Jackie Stewart. And nobody better, of course, could be chosen to be the voice to introduce the champions. Dan Maskell, who seems to be the very sound of Wimbledon. 20, 33 years he's been coming here to Wimbledon. Hasn't missed a day. And I'm sure the the interest and excitement will be just as much for the presidents of the three other traditional Grand Slam championships who are sitting in the Royal Box. There in the front on the left, Philippe Chatrier, the president of the French Federation and also incidentally president of the International Tennis Federation and sitting right behind him, Hunter Delatour, president of the United States Tennis Association. And then to Hunter, De, uh, to Hunter De La Tour's left, right of your picture, that is, Brian Tobin, president of the Lawn Tennis Association of Australia. And there is growing collaboration between these three, these four traditional championships. Ladies and gentlemen, a hundred years ago, the Ladies Singles Championship was inaugurated at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club at Warple Road, Wimbledon. As the popularity of lawn tennis was growing so rapidly after World War I, the club came here to Church Road in 1922, and during this championship meeting, we are celebrating the centenary of the Ladies' Championship. We are fortunate today to have 17 of the 20 lady champions who have happily been able to accept the club's invitation to join in the celebrations and in a few minutes here on the center court, where they have all given us such great delight, they will be introduced to their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Kent, and the president of the club will present to each of them a unique piece of Waterford crystal suitably inscribed to commemorate this memorable and historic occasion. Sadly, Helen Wills Moody, Helen Jacobs, and Karen Sisman are not able to make the journey, but each will receive her memento. by the trumpeters at the Royal Military School of Music, Nella Hall, and the band, the staff band of the Women's Royal Army Corps. And here come the champions. And there, the lady with the white hair, the most extraordinary champion of them all, Kitty Godfrey. Virginia Wade. Who loves this place so much. waiting for the royal party to come down on court. Here they come with, just behind them on the left, Buzzer Haddingham, the chairman 
of the All England Club and chairman of the Joint Championships Committee. And also just behind uh, the Duke of Kent, Jim Cochran, president of the Lawn Tennis Association. bit surprised that the they didn't hear the whole of the national ladies and gentlemen a girl of 16 from prague played her first wimbledon in 1973 and three weeks ago became the third lady to achieve the grand slam she won the title in 1978 79 and 1982 and is the reigning champion martina navratilova Ladies and gentlemen, Martina Navratilova. After her defection, she's finally settled in Dallas in Texas. A record of 23 consecutive singles appearances from 1962 to 1984 in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen celebrating her Silver Jubilee and in Wimbledon centenary year, a British victory, the champion in 1977, Virginia Wade. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was the home of a semi-finalist making her Wimbledon debut in 1972, aged 17. In the 11 Wimbledons that followed, she was runner-up five times and champion three times in 1974, 76, and 1981. Chris Abbott Lloyd. Chris Lloyd's mother's here, and I'm sure sitting wherever she is, she'll be so thrilled today. Jeffrey Pesch, taking a second round Chris Lloyd loser her place. in her first Wimbledon in 1970. She won the title the next year. Runner-up three times, and nine years after her first triumph, she became the champion again. The champion in 1971 and 1980 from Australia, Yvonne Goulagong Corley. She's here with her English husband, Roger Corley. They live these days in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and they just, just bought a boat, and they tell me they're taking up deep sea fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne Corley. British Junior 
Olympic champion twice and world class at table tennis. The first of her 14 Wimbledons was in 1956. Seven years later, she was the runner up and won the championship in 1969. Ann Jones. Chairman of the Women's International Professional Tennis Council these days. Her husband, Pip, and the three children live in Edgbaston. And the three children are here at Wimbledon today for the first time. Pip isn't quite well enough to make it. We wish him well. Ladies and gentlemen, Ann Jones. From 1961 to 1983, a period of 23 years, a lady from California only missed playing at Wimbledon once. In 1978, she broke the record shared with Elizabeth Ryan of 19 Wimbledon titles. She won six singles championships in 1966, 67, 68, and 1972, 73, and 75. Billie Jean King. Billie Jean's had to hurry from the television studio. She's doing commentary back to the United States. These days, she's executive director of Team Tennis and has a, an office in New York. She'll be putting on uh, matches between American cities just before the Olympic Games. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Billie Jean King. The first Australian lady to win Wimbledon did so in 1963 and again in 1965. In 1970, not only did she win it for the third time, but she equaled Maureen Connolly's feat of achieving the Grand Slam. Champion in 1963, 65, and 1970, Margaret Smith Court. I'm looking very proud there, Ken Rosewall. Margaret Court is here with her husband Barry from Perth in West Australia, as well as bringing up their four children. She's been to Bible College recently, and just last night was speaking at a tennis player's service in a London church. Ladies and gentlemen, Margaret Smith Court. Yeah. That's it. Runner-up of 1958, Angela Mortimer, with Christine Truman, provided the first all-British final since 1914. The winner was to be the first British champion since Dorothy Round in 1937. The champion of 1961, Angela Mortimer. Angela lives just a couple of miles away from the All England Club in happy domesticity, married to John Barrett, one of our commentary team. They have two children. Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Mortimer. It's all over. A Brazilian girl of 18 played at Wimbledon for the first time in 1958 and reached the quarterfinals. Her 12th and last entry in singles was in 1977. Three times she had been champion, in 1959, 1960, and 1964. Maria Bueno. Maria still lives in Sao Paulo, Brazil. She writes books on tennis these days and she gives tennis cl clinics and exhibitions. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Bueno. A quarter finalist in 1956 and the winner in the next two years, the champion in 1957 and 1958, 
America's Althea Gibson. Althea is a coach in New Jersey these days. She was a professional golfer for seven years and she's just been reinstated as an amateur golfer. And that's it. Game, set, and match for Miss Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, Althea Gibson. A quarter-finalist at her first Wimbledon in 1948, this American lady was runner-up in 1951, and at her eighth and final appearance in 1956, the champion, Shirley Fry. And like so many of these ex-champions, Shirley Fry, Shirley Fry Irwin, coaches tennis these days. She does it in Farmington, Connecticut. Shirley's pace in the Ladies second set is too much for the English Shirley girl. Fry. And soon it's 5-1 and match point. Between 1946 and 1955, she was three times runner-up in 1947, 48, and 1953. But her classic stroke play was rewarded with the championship title in 1951. Florida's Doris Hart. Doris Hart coaches as well, and she very sensibly has chosen the sunshine of Florida, hence that suntan. Plays a lot of golf as well, she says. Doris Hart, the American girl who had always come so near, finally made it this time, beating her close friend Shirley Fry in two sets. Born in Oklahoma, she was runner-up to her first Wimbledon in 1946, champion in 1948, 49, and 1950. And after an interval of five years, became champion for the fourth time in 1955. Louise Bruff. Louise Bruff is a dentist's wife, and they live in California. She, too, still plays and teaches the game. Miss Bruff came through in style, and the game, set, match, and championship were hers. Another American who became a semi-finalist in her first Wimbledon in 1946 was runner-up in 1949 and 1950, but the champion in 1947, Margaret Osborne. Margaret Dupont is these days a racehorse owner in New Mexico along with her lifelong friend Margaret Varner. She was over not so long ago, Margaret Dupont, supporting this time Margaret Varner at the All England Badminton Championships at Wembley. A 6-2, 6-4 victory for Margaret Osborne, 1947 winner of the All England Cup. Four lady champions were never beaten in the championship event at any time. Lottie Dodd, Suzanne Longman, Pauline Betts, and Maureen Conway. Without losing a set in 1946, the champion from America, Pauline Betts. Pauline Betts holds children's tennis camps in Washington, D.C. It's the first time she's been here since she won Wimbledon. Ladies and gentlemen, Pauline Betts. A Californian making her Wimbledon debut in 1937, she became a semi-finalist and reached the same stage 
in 1938. The following year, 1939, saw the last championships before World War II. And the 1939 champion, Alice Marble. Alice Marble lives in Palm Desert, California, and it's wonderful to see her here because she's undergone surgery five times in recent years. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Alice Marble. In 1923, a British lady was runner-up to Suzanne Longland. The following year, 60 years ago, she became the lady champion. In 1926, she won the championship for the second time. Today, still playing and enjoying her tennis at the age of 88, the champion of 1924 and 1926, Kitty Godfrey. Dan Maskell says Kitty Godfrey does indeed still play tennis quite remarkably. She lives not far away in East Sheen and she plays here at the All England Club twice a fortnight. So the Duke and Duchess of Kent with uh, a final word to Dan Maskell. <laughs> Leave the centre court with Buzzer Haddingham and Jim Cochran and behind them Chris Corringe. So we're all full of memories and, as I say, full of nostalgia. Mercifully, the rain held off. The one day where we'd have liked uh, the most brilliant sunshine, it looked as if uh, we were going to be defeated, but we weren't. And I think all the champions and all the spectators, the people who love to come and watch these great players, have thoroughly enjoyed, as I have indeed, seeing the return of favourites we really love. Day that they and we are not likely to forget.
What a marvellous ceremony. And in the perfect...